And here we are at world three, where we're going to introduce two new concepts, uh, portals and conditionals. So let's start out with the portals and also let's take a look at what our world looks like this time. This time our hero is an ember, it's kind of a flame, and its home is, or its starting place is a match, and it needs to light this log. That's the goal, to light the log on fire. But uh-oh, we had a problem because how is the ember going to get out of this uh, enclosed area because it can't touch the black squares? Well, it does that by using a portal. In this case, our portal is going to be an unlit candle. So when the flame comes in contact or the ember comes in contact with the candle, it will be transported through the portal and it will exit out one of these two exits. So these lit candles are the exits, but it's a random thing as to which one it will come out of. So there is where our conditionals come into. So before I go into detail about how to do conditionals in Scratch, I'm going to have you watch a short little video from some dude named Bill who's going to tell you a little bit about conditionals. People make decisions every day. Uh, for example, before you go outside, you kind of have an if statement that says, if it's raining, then I need to get my jacket. And computers are amazing once you decide those kinds of statements that they can reliably execute those things at unbelievable speed. And so a computer program really uh, is a little bit of math and some if statements uh, where the decision gets made. So in, in this puzzle, the if block helps the zombie make a decision. Right. It checks something. For example, let's use the block that says if there's a path to the left and put a turn left command inside it. So we're telling the zombie to check its surroundings, see if there's that path on the left, and if so, make that turn. And then we use the move forward block inside this repeat uh, to get it to keep moving forward as long as it just wants to go straight. Uh, then when there's the turn, the if block will tell it to make this turn to the left. And you can see if we do that, if we're taking the turns to the left and otherwise moving forward, we'll achieve our goal. So it's an example of using an if statement, which is really a, a fundamental concept in computer programming. Uh, one of the first things I learned was uh, uh, how to write a program to play tic-tac-toe. And you know, so I had if statements to say, OK, if the other person is about to win, go ahead and, and block that uh, spot. Uh, so have fun learning how to use if statements. It's a, a key concept. All right, so that's Bill Gates, the man himself, telling you about conditionals. And that's what we're going to also be using in this case. So let's take a look at the steps we have to go through here. First of all, of course, our ember has to move two to the right. But before we even do that, let me get through the important things. Let me remix, make sure I've got a copy, and let me get my always do that. Let me get my space bar reset all done so it's out of the way. And I know I'm going to move my ember two to the right, so I'll just do two rights, simple enough. But I don't know which of these two he's going to come out of. If I click it right now, you'll see, oh, he came out of that one on the left. Let me reset it, click it again. Oh, this time it was out on the right. So you never know. So how are we going to distinguish between those two? Well, when you look at it, we're going to use a conditional. We're going to say, if something happens, then I want him to go left. So if he hits this one, I want him to go left. Else means if this thing is not true. So if he hits this one, whatever we're going to put in there, he goes left. If he does not hit this one, in other words, if he hits this one, then we want him to go right. And then simple beyond that, we put our win. So that leaves us with, well, what's going to go inside here that will help us distinguish between the right uh, portal exit and the left portal exit? So if you look at it, well, there's some obvious things that will distinguish them. One is that they have two different colored backgrounds. So we can use that by going to our sensors. In our sensors, we have all kinds of options here, but let's pull out the one that says touching color. So I'm going to put that inside here. And in order to change the color that it's going to sense, 
I click my mouse inside this box and it changes to a little pointer finger. And then I, as I move them around, you see how that box color is changing depending on what the finger is pointing at? I'm going to point at the background color, that kind of pukey green color. And now it should work. It says if it's touching the pukey green, then go left. If it's not touching the pukey green, that's what else means. If not, then it's going to go right. So let's check it out. Yay, yay. I'm going to reset it. Try it again. Yay, okay. Very good. So that's one way to do that. Let's look at one other method. Instead of touching the color, we could also note that another way to distinguish between these two, and there are others beyond this, by the way, but we're just going to stick to these two for now. The other way to distinguish between them is the name of the exit. So how do I know which one is which? We've got portal exit and portal exit two that are down here. There's two ways you can do it. One is you can actually just select the portal and it will tell you this one on the left is portal exit. That means this one on the right, of course, is portal exit two. So that's one way to do it. Or you can do the reverse. If you click on it up here, I'm sorry, if you click on it down here on portal exit, you will see it kind of flash up above. It's flashing or here. It's flashing, okay? So now I know this one on the left is portal exit and this one on the right is portal exit two. So in my sensors, I can go to touching, put that in here, and when I pull this down, I have an option for the various different objects that are on my stage. I'm gonna click portal exit two because I know that's the one on the right, which means if he touches that, I want him to go left. If he touches the other one, I want him to go right. Let's test it out. Yay, it worked. Let's do it again. Excellent. So now you can proceed through uh, some of the worlds and uh, some of the levels in this world. And when you get a little bit further on, there's going to be an added complication, which we will describe when you get to that point. Have fun. I'll save your work. There I am saving it. See, save. Yay.